If you haven't been living under a rock for the last month, you probably heard about the release of Gran Turismo 4 Spec 2, which can be considered as the first overhaul mod release for this beloved racing game. After a year of building hype through beta builds showcases on different YouTube channels, it has finally been released to the public and is being promoted as the definitive way to play Gran Turismo 4 as an upgrade over the original game. It brings a few quality of life changes, such as new engine sounds, being able to respray your cars, optimize menu shortcuts, and the ability to disable driving aids for all cars. But Past surface level changes, there are substantial gameplay changes as a spec 2 is a project which aims to improve upon Gran Turismo 4 in a way which Polyphony themselves would, and that is a quote straight out of their website. So, is this really the case? Is a spec 2 the definitive way to play Gran Turismo 4? There is only one way to find out, writing a new username and then dropping into GT mode with 10,000 credits to our name. Visiting the used car dealership reveals a couple of new options as a spec 2 has changed the offerings of used cars cars, introducing many cars which could have only been bought as new on vanilla GT4. Outside the cars priced out of our budget, I find this green Toyota MRS is worth mentioning. While it might seem expensive at 9,900 credits, it's well worth the cost of admission. With a single oil change, this MRS can decimate both Sunday Cup and Japanese compacts, along with one of the new events introduced in Spec 2, the four-cylinder shootout. This should give you enough funds to upgrade the MRS and enter MR Challenge, Japanese 90s, and Spider Roadster, making the MRS the most relevant new addition to the list of starter cars. I have been asked if my tier list of starter cars applies to Spec 2, and for the most part it does for the cars that are still available for purchase. For anyone wondering, there is a list that compiles the entire used car market cycle made by Azulia, which you can find in the description of this video. It took a bit of work as it's unnecessarily hard to access this information. It will be great if an official list were provided, as it will help with planning challenge runs that require specific cars. Another group of starter cars are licensed price cars, which have been changed in its entirety. From a gameplay perspective, price cars are one of Gran Turismo's most clever mechanics, offering rewards for completing events and motivating players to tackle as many as possible. However, there is one aspect of this system that even Polyphony seems to misunderstand, the balance between cost and reward. For price cars to feel truly rewarding, they should reflect the effort required to earn them, providing real value to the player. Unfortunately, Gran Turismo has always been inconsistent with its price cars, and GT4 brought things to a new new level, as it confuses real-life desirability with in-game desirability. Granting cars which serve as museum pieces for difficult tasks, such as completing a license with gold times, often enough the prices available aren't worth the effort, and they are condemned inside the void known as the Gran Turismo Garage. I always had a problem with this in Vanilla GT4, and I was expecting a Spec 2 to address this situation as a known gameplay flaw. The Nissan Micra you received for completing the V license with bronze times is an improvement over the Volkswagen Lupo you received in Vanilla it is quite bizarre that I cannot buy a micro until I receive it as a price car though. But silver prices are already a misstep, as we receive a Pontiac Sunfire concept, one of the worst cars available at the start of each GT4 playthrough, and made worse by the fact Vanilla GT4 rewards the Mazda Kusabi for the same feats, one of the best front-wheel drive cars available in the entire game. Personally, I would have made the Kusabi the gold price, as it offers a much better incentive to complete the challenge, unlike the Dodge Charger Super Big granted in Spec 2. A muscle car which doesn't feel fitting as the reward for earning a gold license given its average performance. No suspect to reward us properly for getting gold prices on each license. A license gives me mixed feelings. This 1987 Honda Civic SI race car, capable of entering a wide variety of events at the start of each playthrough, is rather useful, but it does have a setback as race cars come equipped with racing slicks, and these tires cannot be used on most events. So sport tires are a cost which must be considered. Another thing to mention is the fact this Civic comes with an atrocious setup from factory, which fails to showcase the actual potential of this car. I will leave a setup which fixes its issues in the description of this video. Despite its good looking livery, the Civic is outclassed by other cars, which make it rather hard to justify its high entry cost. It certainly doesn't belong as a gold price award. International B Gold does redeem the previous two. A Buick especially is certainly worth the effort, as it's one of the best classic cars available. Well, it isn't, because a Spec 2 decides to grant a Shelby cover. 427 for completing the S license with bronze prices. A better classic car in all aspects is given with the bare minimum effort, removing all incentives to get the Buick on the first place. International A Gold gives a Lancia Stratos rally car. Yes, it's beautiful. I know all of its real life achievements and the fact it took some crazy Germans putting a four wheel drive system on an ordinary salon to beat it, but it sure as hell doesn't translate into GT4, and taking this thing into a rally course should be paired with Master Gas on the list of crimes against humanity. 
humanity. Oh, there's a lot I have to say about rally cars. There's an entire section about these things in the open. While it cooks, though, I can offer you a Cadillac CN as the price car for completing the S license with gold times. It is a solid reward, and I do appreciate the attempt at balancing, as the CN could previously be unlocked by completing the Ombre Rally on easy difficulty, a special condition events doable with a starter car, which completely broke the game's balance. YouTuber T Kanji has made a good video about it, which I will leave in the description of this video. While a spec 2 does attempt to reward the player properly for their efforts, in most cases there is no point going out of your way for gold times, as most of the price cars can be outclassed by cars available on the market or won on easier events, outside serving hyper-specific purposes, such as the Chevrolet Silverado granted by completing the A license with silver times, which now makes price car runs possible, but outside this very specific challenge run there is no real incentive to go through such lengths, beyond simply collecting cars. If I am going to put in the effort for a car, it should be at least be somewhat useful. I am not suggesting that cars essential for completing the game shall be locked out behind gold licenses, but the CN serves as a good benchmark for what I mean, a good car for a difficult task, such as smashing the like button and subscribing. I am aiming to reach 10,000 subscribers before the end of 2024, and given most of my viewers are unsubscribed, it should be possible. I have faith in you all. That covers the new cars available at the beginning of each playthrough, but there is one aspect that will stand out regardless of your choice. You will find cars drive quite different compared to vanilla GT4, and not for the better. They feel more eager to break traction, an increased tendency to understeer, and braking distances have been increased. These changes weren't caused by tweaking the physics engine, but by changing the tire compound, all cars equip as a default. There are three tiers of tarmac tires available in GT4, and each tier can be subdivided by tire compound. First, we have normal tires. These can be seen as regular street tires which aren't made for track use, regardless of compound. If this is your first time hearing about normal tires, I wouldn't be surprised, as they aren't used outside a set of a specific license tests and driving missions 11, 14, and 15. If you were ever wondering why cars feel so atrocious on those missions, it's thanks to the fact normal tires have the lowest grip out of the three tiers available. While they're intended to provide a realistic driving experience based on the misguided idea that less grip equals more realism, this isn't really the case. Outside self-imposed challenges, these tires serve no purpose. Also, no body in the right mind should bring a car to a racetrack with no name Chinese tires which have the rigidity of concrete blocks. You need a performance tire for that, which is exactly the role of sport tires. There are three compounds available. Harder tires suffer less degradation but provide less grip, while softer tires suffer more degradation in exchange of higher grip. All production cars in GT4 come equipped with sport mediums, making them the most used compound in each playthrough. While the sport tires are in full-blown racing the slicks, they are adequate for track use on street cars when paired with the appropriate setup adjustments. Of course, they have their limits, which become more apparent as you move up to more powerful cars. Then there's slick tires. These are racing tires and are generally equipped on race cars, as most events open for production cars ban their usage. Obviously, these are the best tires available in GT4, with five compounds available which work under the same logic as sport tires. So, now that we understand the tire hierarchy in GT4, you will be thrilled to know that Spec 2 has replaced the traditional sport medium tires with normal tires, which have worse performance across the board. What is the reason for this change then? On their website, they argue road tires are meant to make the game more interesting for experienced players. This isn't the case. Cars don't feel more lively, as anyone can notice they are a limiting factor even in the slowest commuters. Using inferior tools doesn't make anyone more skilled. You perform better when your equipment is in proper condition. And the same principle applies to tire choice in the game. To make matters worse, GT4 already managed this situation perfectly, where normal tires were free of charge for any car, always available for those who decide to use them. If you need more proof of this being an unnecessary change, Spectus 1.06 patch reduced the cost of sport tires substantially, but this in itself creates a new problem, as now sport softs are really cheap, and these tires can be seen as overpowered in the early game given the short length of all races at this stage. In vanilla, the situation was balanced by the cost of sport softs. Given they don't provide a massive performance boost over mediums, it was somewhat pointless, but now they are almost free, breaking part of the early game balance. There is no logic reason to justify this change. It provides a worse gameplay experience across the board, and this isn't a better alternative than the freedom of choice provided by vanilla GT4. Concrete tires or not, we have to start racing. The spec 2 changes the entire progression system on Gran Turismo 4. While we still have the same event categories, all of these have seen changes. New events have been introduced that focus on cars previously overlooked, such as races for wagons, events
events based on different engine types and new manufactured events, these additions are appreciated, but there is a slight issue with new races under beginner events. Opponents seem to use normal tires, while races already present in the vanilla game have them driving on sport mediums, leading to inconsistent difficulty. Many existing events have also been reworked, with some races altered and several tournaments shortened, most notably 1000 miles, now renamed the Grand Tour, which features much shorter races, a welcome quality of life improvement. However, there are changes which seem counterintuitive, as many of the event restrictions in Spec 2 have been tightened so much that they limit creativity for challenge runs. This goes against the supposed goal of Spec 2 being more challenge friendly. While I understand why I can enter a convertible into a race for wagons, introducing a 30k cost cap for the Sunday Cup is bizarre, considering most cars at this stage cost a third of that or less. Probably one of the most frustrating examples comes with Tuning Car Grand Prix, a championship where different cars built by tuner companies compose the grid. This event was open for all sorts of cars, now it's restricted to only tuners, which severely limits creativity. What happened to building cars with parts from different tuners available in Tuner Village? In my latest challenge, I used a Toyota Tacoma to compete against the Operas 2000, one of the best cars in GT4. This is something Spec 2 doesn't allow me to do. Oddly enough, I can't use roof cars in this event anymore. Yes, roof is a manufacturer, so I do understand the logic, but it's still rather odd when they appear as opponents on the grid. I assume this is an unintentional glitch, but it's still funny. One of the new events added by Spec 2 called Clubman League, yes, League, not Cup, is crippled by its restrictions, limited to race cars with 296 horsepower or below, a narrow set of options. While I understand the intention, these restrictions make this event worse than it could be. For one, these races are dominated by the two rear-wheel drive cars available, the BMW 320i Touring Car and Lexus IS GT1, and picking one of those will turn this into a slaughter. If this event was open to street cars, suddenly this little tournament could be an excellent stage for challenge runs of all sorts. For a project which claims to make changes for challenge runs, this is quite the shortcoming. Something similar does happen under Japanese events, where the original JGTC tournament was split into two for the respective classes, GT300 and 500. The problem is, it is also restricted to cars from those classes respectively, when it used to be free, allowing us to bring any cars we desire. My previous challenge run was made possible by the fact I could use an Audi TT DTM for the same event, which wouldn't be possible on Spec 2. I also find it quite curious how on Spec 2's website one can find the following item as a gameplay change. I quote, Tighten restrictions on some events to encourage using different cars and strategies. End quote. This is probably the argument which will be used against my criticism, but it doesn't stand as in itself creates a contradiction, as high restrictions will always guide the player towards the same options, as innovation isn't allowed. A good example, both present in Vanilla GT4 and Spec 2, is the Supercar Festival. These races have a restriction which ban cars below 493 horsepower. It's on the name, right, supercars. But there are a plethora of cars below this power figure which are competitive and are left out thanks to its low horsepower figures. If the goal is to encourage creativity, restrictions should be placed considering the performance of opponents, while allowing players to create their own challenges. As it stands, many events are too easy because most options available overpower the AI. To make matters worse, the few events where players were rewarded for testing new strategies, such as the Speedster Trophy, one could argue opponents in this tournament were cheating, as their cars had stats way past what we can achieve, but these races are doable with appropriate setup work, borderline trivial I will say. I'll give some credit where it's due as a spec 2 is less restrictive in the sense that one doesn't need to complete all beginner and professional events in order to enter the Gran Turismo World Championship, meaning there are events which can be skipped or outright ignored for certain challenge run ideas. However, this also presents another problem in the sense progression has been somewhat trivialized, as the path required to roll the credits has been simplified. GTWC has been moved to expert events, but it's the first event on the list and now has been downgraded to an international B license requirement, which is one step below from the original international A. Why is this worth mentioning? Because GT4 has a progression flow, where the player's only exposure to LMPs before GTWC is a single license test, international A16. In Spec 2, this key exposure has been removed entirely. If players follow a direct path to the GTWC, they go from driving regular streetcars to handling the fastest cars in the game, which present their unique driving challenges. While regional events for touring cars can somewhat ease this transition, the leap is still too large for the average player, who might find themselves frustrated. Oddly enough, most of 
these regional bands require the International A license, with only two accessible with an International B, and the cars in those races are much slower. Seriously, the license balancing situation is quite funny, because you have manufacturer events which require the International A, and clearly aren't as hard, so these have become almost irrelevant as they don't serve to gatekeep events as they were originally intended. Spec 2 could have reorganized expert events so that JTWC serves as the finale, allowing players to gradually acclimate to more powerful cars. Through race car focused tournaments like the Dream Car Championship, GT All Stars, and Real Circuits Tour, before tackling the GTWC, leaving Formula GT as a post game event right at the end of the list. There is also another problem in the sense that now, given GTWC has become the first event of the Expert Hall and all progression requirements have been removed, well, there's no true end goal on GT4 anymore. It seems like the game's finale has been removed and there's nothing else to replace it, which doesn't help challenge run structure as now, even if you do complete this tournament, there's an entire hall left to tackle, and most of its events are easier than GTWC. If this wasn't enough, its prize car has been replaced. The Ford GT Spec 2, the cover car of GT4, can be bought and isn't a prize car. The prize car received for GTWC is the Toyota Castro Supra. Seriously, what is the point of this? A GT1 throwback? Yeah, sure, these two look similar, says Stevie Wonder. It's not a special car either, as it finds itself outclassed by the wooden Supra and Nissan Pitwork set, both cars being available at their respective dealerships for purchase, making this endeavor of beating one of the game's hardest championships kind of pointless. This Castro Supra is a single case on the list, as Spec 2 has changed most of the price cars available, either swapping them by different ones or placing them on different events. Price cars are relevant as they play a vital role in Gran Turismo's structure, either allowing us to enter new events or allowing us to farm credits for cars we need. They are a part of the game's progression system as they open new events for us, along with being an incentive to beat certain races. As I mentioned when discussing license prices, the concept of cost versus benefit is crucial. A price should never be so underwhelming that it discourages players from completing more events. The only area where this concept has been understood are beginner events, where each price car fulfills a certain role and opens a new set of events. But it doesn't take long before this approach goes through the window and price cars become really inconsistent. Some are a downgrade compared to vanilla GT4, such as receiving a Celica GT4 for completing Club Man Cup, a car which is a low tier used offering and provides nothing of value in this playthrough past being a starter, and it's not even the best at that. The Master Speed 6 granted in the original game is much better in this case. Relatively average cars, such as the Golf GTI Mark V, Mercedes-Benz SL55 AMG, and DC5 Integra Type R are now price cars. The Mustang GT is a price car, which in itself creates an interesting issue, as the only vehicle available for its manufacturer event, at least in a consistent manner, now is the Shelby 350 GT, which itself has to be won in the Shelby manufacturer race. Some others are outright bizarre. Your price for completing Sukuba with the heart is a Toyota RSC, a car which might as well be filler hides behind one of the game's hardest events, and this is without getting into all the price cars which can be bought new or used. While this could be counted with your hands in vanilla GT4, they have reproduced substantially for Spec 2. As an example, most cars rewarded by endurance races can be bought, and some cars, such as the Audi R8, are duplicated. There is no reason to do this, as price cars can be bought from their dealerships after being won, and there is a new option which solves the issue of mileage, called Full Restore. Described as a nut and bolts restoration paired with an engine rebuild which resets the odometer back to zero, it's essentially turning your car back to new. As always, remember to carry out an oil change for a horsepower boost. Oh, that's curious. Why my engine has the same power? It's almost like the engine itself is worn despite carrying out a full restoration. And this is exactly what's happening. GT4 has a stat called Engine Life, which decreases total power output by 5% past certain mileage, and Spec 2 doesn't return this stat back to zero, meaning all you have is your old car with the classic rigidity refresher plan and the world's most expensive oil change throw together. The automotive industry hasn't seen a scam so big since the Devil 16. I guess it does make GT4 more realistic now that we have odometer rollbacks, and yes, I know it is listed on Spec 2's website as a known issue, but that doesn't make it less amusing. However, the changes on price cars have also brought another side effect which affects the core of Gran Turismo gameplay. Most traditional grinding routes have been destroyed. They went to such extremes to the point of changing the cost of multiple cars so they can be sold for less credits, making them inefficient for grinding. It seems to be of such relevance that it warranted a patch on an older build. 1.03 reduced the values of two cars, Nissan GTR Concept 01 and Nissan GTR Concept LM Race Car 02. The first one 
amount is relevant to us. It is the new price card given for Capri Rally EC. It's curious how eager a spec 2 seems to keep the player broke. I decided to search for efficient grinding routes, so I am sharing them. It will be nice if this didn't change after the release of this video, but they do work on spec 2's 1.06 release. For our first route, we need a front wheel drive starter car along with the P license. The Nissan Micra serves this purpose well, along with being a free price car, which means free money for upgrades. You can also do Sunday Cup for more upgrade money. We need to take the Micra to FF Challenge and win all three races, which will give us the keys to a Golf GTI, which will also need its own upgrade so it can be taken to Shards Ball League A. These three races give us the keys to an Audi Nuvo Lighty concept after being completed, which can be sold for 260,000 credits. These League A races should take around 15 minutes to complete, give or take, which isn't much longer than the average Capri Rally grind. The next tier of grinding comes with the International A license. Honestly, there's a plethora of cars which can be used for this, so I decided to try the Hyundai Clicks. This is a pretty average car, but it only needs a few mods to achieve what we need. This time, we'll be heading into Umbria Rally Normal, three laps in Cita Diaria. You have to find a good place to make an overtake and then win this race. A change made by Spec 2 is the fact that special condition events now consist of a single race rather than two, which means it only takes seven minutes or less to get your hands on a Delta Rally car, which can be sold for 159,000 credits. If we pair it with the monetary price we receive for winning this race and take into account this race takes only six minutes, this makes for one of the quickest grinding strategies available. I didn't have to depart from Capri Rally to come up with its replacement, but if you really want a RSC Rally car, it's now hiding on Homologation Heroes, a new event dedicated to homologation versions of iconic rally cars. This event requires an international P license and consists of three races. It's not too difficult. I made it more interesting by driving an underpowered Audi 4. A modern Lancer Evo or Impreza STI will easily breeze through. In the end, the classic grind is still there, just relocated to a new event. Now, the best grinding scheme requires a bit more setup along with the International A license. For one, we need to buy an Audi TT. It doesn't matter which one, new or used, but I am biased towards the B6 and its sound and the shade of orange. With this Audi, it is time to tackle this manufacturer event which consists of three races, which grant an Audi TT DTM after being completed. I really don't want to see this car again after my latest playthrough, but I have to. With this car, now we must take to European events and complete the DTM tournament, a five-race affair where the TT is the best car available for it, so it just steamrolls the tournament. That is, if you don't want to drive it yourself, because P-Spec is a thing. Which means, given there is no license requirements for a P-Spec, you could probably do this only with a P-license, as it's the only requirement to complete Audi's trophy, where the TT DTM is awarded. Sure, you need to grind the V-Spec driver so he's competitive, but it doesn't make it any less amusing that all you need to secure an Audi array, which can be sold for 760,000 credits, is the first license of the game. While it's the best grinding scheme, it should be noted that the Audi R8 is the second best car in GT4, so you totally want to keep one in your garage. It's quite the upgrade from the old CLK LM, and one I welcome, given how much of a beginner strap the thing has spent for almost 20 years, it probably deserves a buff. So outside giving mouse on tires to old cars, has anything been done to improve them? And the answer is yes. A plethora of cars have been adjusted in spec 2. The Lister Storm B12 finally went to the gym and lost a few kilograms, and the Chile Vertigo got a more appropriate engine. Multiple cars had their weight distribution adjusted. Now, I am aware how difficult it is to get these details, as car manufacturers don't really share it unless people dare to measure them. And Polyphony themselves made some outrageous claims in some of these as well, and there has been an attempt on the spec 2 to correct them. I do appreciate this, but it should be noted that it does have an influence on how these cars drive. And that's where all the good news end, because the next set of changes are questionable. Allow me to introduce you to one car. The Subaru Impreza Spec C is one of the most important cars in GT4, as it's probably the best car available for rally events. Its stats and low cost lies it above all factory rally cars present in GT4. However, for Spec 2's 1.06 update, this Impreza found itself nerfed. While cars are composed by multiple stats, the one we are concerned right now are called grip modifiers. These can be seen as the car's ability to grip into the road itself. The higher they are, the better the car's grip will be regardless of tire compound. Its grip modifiers were reduced, hampering its potential in rally events, as dirt and the snow have a lower grip than tarmac obviously, so if a car has a higher grip modifier, it will make these lower grip surfaces more tolerable. The problem here isn't the impressive spec C, it's the fact all rally cars outside the Mitsubishi Evolution Super Rally car are absolutely atrocious choices, and they have to be buffed in order to provide a better gameplay experience. As it stands, these cars 
virus cannot fulfill their intended purposes and we know why. Their creep modifiers are lower than they should be. A minimum of 100 should be implemented for all rally cars, which is funny because the Suzuki Scudo got an increase on its creep modifiers, so the issue is known to some degree. A downforce increase to 30-30 to all rally cars will make sense too, the same level provided by the GT Wing which is available for most cars. These cars deserve to fulfill their intended purpose, but no, we must always level them. Right comrade, because we are all equal, equally miserable. From the ashes of the Spec C however, a new contender arises. One car which saw a substantial buff is the Lotus Motorsport Elise. This is a car which found itself outshadowed by its newer siblings, and so it had its grip modifiers increased substantially. However, we are talking about a Lotus Elise, a car which already in its own right is quite powerful, at the new grip increases and the fact that it has higher downforce than its siblings after receiving a GT wing, and what you have is a monster which can decimate the entire game. There is little which stands on the path of the Motorsport Elise now, and it can also receive dirt and snow tires. With a bit of setup magic, this Elise can now terrorize opponents even on the dirt, becoming one of the most busted cars in the entire game, without a doubt. This isn't a fluke, as I took the Elise to Grand Canyon, the hardest rally stage in the game, and I made sure to have our Lancer Revolution Super Rally car as my opponent, the best rally car in GT4, well at least budget as such. While this race was a bit off, it's certainly possible to score a victory here. It will be funny if the Motorsport Elise had its dirt and snow tires removed, I find it so absurd that I wanted to stay though. But seriously, all rally cars need a buff on their grip modifiers, that will help them balance them out with other offerings. It is time to leave the dirt and head back into proper roads however. Endurance races saw a few tweaks on Spec 2, they are still locked behind game completion, rather than the traditional 25%, this number has been decreased to 20%, wow, but still, deal of the century. Honestly, the progression restriction behind endurance events has always struck me as somewhat absurd, given there are all sorts of events which don't warrant such a long waiting time. There are new endurance events in SP2 and some older events were replaced. While I appreciate the changes and especially the return of the special stage Route 5 endurance, I think one of them completely fails in execution. The 30 laps of Trial Mountain is an event which was present on Gran Turismo 2, meant to be the first taste of endurance racing for most players. While I do appreciate that one of my favorite events is making a comeback, I find its execution rather flawed. For one, the grids are composed of front wheel drive cars which destroy their tires. Take this Alpha 166 by example, stopping after 5 laps of racing. Yes, 5 laps. And the rest of the grid is so far behind, they might as well be on a different race. The only opponent worth mentioning is a Lotus Alice 111S, which is kind of insane given it will decimate any single car on the grid, causing a clear balancing issue. While these issues are part of GT4, this one is outrageous, and it turns the event into a hot lapping session. Honestly, if you haven't noticed that FF cars do not work for an endurance setting, as GT4's physics do not allow them to be competitive thanks to their higher tire wear. Honestly, this race will have worked much better with low power rear wheel drive cars, and totally should have been available from the start of each playthrough. The actual circuit is also another endurance which makes a return from GT2, but given grids are composed out of muscle cars, it does manage to be a good remake which doesn't suffer thanks to in-game physics issues. Midfield Raceway is, well, midfield, it's always fun, I also appreciate the change made to Motegi 8 hours which was shortened to 2 hours, however, I do not appreciate this new restriction for tunnel cars now appearing once again, I guess I can't bring my super wagon into these races anymore, the shorter length is appreciated though, never made sense why this race was so long really, it was always tedious to get through, same applies to the 9 hours of Tsukuba which has been replaced, and the repeat of Lessard follows suit as well, however, there is one race which has been changed substantially, El Capitan 200 miles is a classic, known as the home of the Toyota Minolta in Vanilla. This 66 lap race is open to street cars of all sorts, being a pretty fun race which barely clocks below the 2 hour mark. For Spec 2 however, a new restriction was introduced, and only rally cars are able to compete. This is an atrocious change as most rally cars are all wheel drive, and this drivetrain layout has increased tire wear, on a circuit which is known for shredding tires, creating an unholy combination as frequent pit stops for new tires are required. A race which was previously a blast has now been turned into a snooze fest. I do not understand what is the point of this change, it only made a good race frustrating. Oh yeah, it also gives you an atrocious price, probably the best car you could use for this and can be bought from day one. You know what else features a ton of rally cars? The new driving missions. Six missions have been added based off beta content, and for the most part I can see why these were removed, because they aren't anything noteworthy. 
they are simple and outside some questionable descriptions that is not how all-wheel drive systems work in balanced tuning settings. So you mean the stock settings? Noted. Really, these five missions aren't so bad. The final one, however, mission 40, is a different story. This mission has us driving a Mercedes-Benz CLK LM while chasing a Sauber C9, and we have two laps on the Nürburgring to shorten a 12-second gap or thereabouts. The assignment in itself isn't the problem, it's the car. The CLK LM is running on a stock setup on the Nürburgring, a circuit full of bumps with a car which is low to the ground and constantly hitting them, turning them into a lottery whenever the car will go into a spin. This issue can be fixed by raising the ride height and softening the springs, allowing the CLK LM to handle bumps more effectively. It's an extreme example because it significantly impacts gameplay, highlighting that the spec 2 doesn't grasp that mastering a flawed tool isn't a real challenge. You wouldn't call someone a skilled cook for learning how to cook with a spoon. By that logic, racing teams that fine-tune their cars for each track will be seen as hacks for not mastering the cars as they come from factory. Once you eliminate the randomness out of the equation, overtaking the C9 becomes fairly easy. I managed to pass it quite early on the final lap, showing that the challenge isn't really about driving skill, it's more about enduring the car's awful setup. It's a shame because it could have been a highlight, but it's yet another strike for Spec 2's failure at balancing difficulty. To make things better, you know what's awarded for completing these new driving missions? A Formula GT. There are four different Formula GTs available as price cars on different events, but it can also be bought from the second-hand dealership and bought new whenever you have one on your garage. The hyperinflation of Formula single-seaters is upon us. Also, you can put a roll cage on Formula cars for some reason. By the love of God, don't do this. Don't do this. Roll cages are broken in GT4. I just went to show this and I couldn't find a better place to do so. It's kind of sad in a way because the spec 2 will always be important given it's the first complete modding project created for GT4 and will probably be the benchmark most future mods are measured against. While its quality of life updates such as menu shortcuts are appreciated, the rest of its changes introduce downsides which actually hamper the advertised goal of improving upon the vanilla game. New races are fun but the events have become more restricted than before which is a handicap for challenge run planning, another advertised goal of Spec 2. Seriously, the only change it made for challenge runs was adding one truck as a price car, so now price car runs are viable and add trucks to the used car roster, so used car runs can be completed. It recognizes severe balancing flaws with rally cars, so takes the worst solution possible by destroying the most viable car. All the changes made to Spec 2 prove the resources and tools to fix GT4 are available, and they have been made worse by personal choice. However, what makes this affair so offensive is the fact that Spec 2 is being advertised as the best way to play Gran Turismo 4. That is why I made this whole video. A Spec 2 can only be described as a publicity stunt which has been hyped for almost a year. Through early access showcases to selected content creators to a public who has been desperately waiting for their first taste of a Gran Turismo 4 overhaul mod for years already, all changes were presented as shiny new things in order to get people excited, without reviewing their effects on gameplay, but still advertising a Spec 2 as an upgrade, the definitive way to play Gran Turismo. It will be harmful for the Gran Turismo community as a whole if this narrative becomes mainstream, given any new mod project which does aim to correct the flaws of GT4 will be met with Spec 2 has done that already, but as this video showcases, it does not. I see Spec 2 for what it is, the vision of one man, how his perfect Gran Turismo game shall be, a subjective vision, and thus it shall be treated as such, a mod, not a replacement. But I want to end this video in a positive light, because Spec 2 has brought good things, it has made people work together to achieve something special. Spec 2 also includes the randomizer release on 2023, which randomizes all price cars available based off the save file's name. What if there's a way to accurately predict each price car available? Thank you Yellowbird for the 100 asses. Cheers mate, appreciate you. Yeah, I'm on the randomizer so we're probably gonna get some shitbox. That's right, we know which price cars hide under every single event, and we're still on a quest to find a username which can 100% the game only with price cars, a quest that I will stream live here on this YouTube channel. I want to thank two people for figuring this out. Asulia has been the main developer behind this software, which emulates the randomizer's algorithm and reveals all price cars, and can be found in the description of this video, along with T. Kanji who has helped to optimize its results for viability and 100% completion. 
education viability. I want to thank them both for their contributions to the Gran Turismo community as a whole. I will also be streaming my attempts to find a name which can complete 100% of Gran Turismo 4 with price cars alone. You don't want to miss that. Make sure you are subscribed. With that said, it is time to thank those who support this channel with their hard earned cash. First, come our YouTube members, the Com family. We have a goal. If we manage to reach 200 members, I'll stream a playthrough of Tokyo Extreme Racer 3 with an Isuzu V Cross, followed by the Com Father, the member who has gifted the most memberships on September, Blaine Devlin with a total of 25 memberships, and also my Patreons. We thank them as follows. What am I to racers? Professional racers? And world champions, Line Dev, See What Happens Racing UK, Sunder Kiselli, Enzo Lassonieri, Hunter Kaufman, Josh Big, Lonnie Murray, Dicecom, Espriel, and Dotside. If you want to join these wonderful people, you can do so at www.patreon.com slash yellowbirdoit or following the link in the description of this video. I make videos on the stream for a living, so your support is invaluable to me. I cannot thank you enough for your support and patience. With that said, I hope to see you soon, either on my next stream or video. If this is your first time in this channel, you will find a playlist with all of my videos at the end. If you haven't left a like, now is your last chance to do so, or your dislike if you got nothing else to do with your life. Take care and bye for now.